and welcome. My name is Bettina. Welcome to this yoga for fertility. So we know that for our fertility, the best thing that yoga can offer us is it brings down our nervous system. So it brings down our stress. It can help us find balance in the body. But not only that, when you're more balanced, when you're not stressed, you start making better choices. So you'll eat better, you'll sleep better, you'll drink more water, you'll do all the things that make you feel good. And all of these things combined work together to create optimum fertility in your body. So let's get into this fertility yoga practice today. This particular practice is designed specifically for after menstruation, so after you stop bleeding, up until ovulation. And the reason for that is we do compress the belly and we do a fair few twists, which is not recommended in early pregnancy or during menstruation. So if you are in those stages, I recommend checking out my four part series, which has classes for each of the stages of your cycle or my 28 day fertility yoga course, which has everything you'll need. If you are ready for this class, let's get straight into it. Remember at all times, listen to your body. If anything doesn't feel right, back off and come back to the class when you're ready. So we're going to actually start this class on our belly because I really want to bring awareness to the belly and to the belly breath. So just bring the hands underneath the head and let one cheek rest onto the hands. You might give the hips a little rock from side to side just to kind of get them comfortable. If you're having any lower back pain, you can either come out of this position entirely or just kind of roll the fleshy bits of your thighs inside and let the heels roll out. That can sometimes help relieve any of that tension. So as you breathe in, I want you to breathe into your belly and just notice as the belly starts to press into the floor. I want you to breathe in as much as you possibly can. So filling those lungs all the way up to the top of the chest, pausing for a moment. Breathe in a little bit more. There's always more breathing. And then slowly breathe out. And again, breathing in as deeply as you can. Pause, breathe in a little bit more and slowly breathe out. I want you to continue this breath for another five breaths, noticing that when you exhale, you let everything go, let it sink, let it rest, let it start to melt into the floor, almost as if you become a part of the floor. Slowly start lifting the head up. I want you to keep that slow, languishing feeling of being tired, lethargic. See if you can keep that throughout your practice. So none of this push and hustle energy. You want to get really into that yin, that feminine, that slow, that presence of being, not doing. So we're coming into our sphinx pose. Bring the elbows underneath the shoulders. Press the palms into the mat, draw the shoulder blades back down the back. Engage the legs, draw the toes together. Start lifting through the heart. Keep breathing into that belly. And slowly come down, bring the right hand out to the sides, left hand by the shoulder, bend the left leg and start to roll towards that right arm. So you can bring the head down to the mat, you're finding a bit of a twist, you'll also quite probably be feeling quite a stretch through that right arm. Gently roll back onto the belly, we swap sides, so bring the left arm out. Roll towards that left arm. 
Make sure you rest the head and neck down so there's no tension through the head and neck. Letting go through the shoulders, through the upper back as well. And then slowly coming back onto the belly. This time, I want you to bring the hands by the shoulders. I want you to think about drawing the shoulders up towards the ears and then drawing them down towards the buttocks. Pressing gently into the hands, engaging the legs and the glutes, lifting the heart up. So most of the work here is done with the back. There's just a little bit extra coming from the arms. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower down. I want you to shift to fingertips and we're gonna work with the breath. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. One more inhale and exhale. So I want you to find that crocodile again. So bring the hands back underneath the head, rest the head down, let everything go, rock and roll through those hips, making sure you're releasing all parts of your body. Gently releasing back up again, reach the right hand forward and reach the left hand around to the left ankle. Gently press the foot into the hand so that you can lift the right arm. Maybe you can lift the left leg and there's a little bit of pressure on that left side. Breath in, lift the hand a little higher, lift the leg a little higher. Exhale, rest down, find crocodile, rock of those hips. Opposite side, left arm reaches, find the right foot, press and lift. Exhale, release. Rock the hips from side to side. Bring those hands by the shoulders. Bring the knees in as you slowly come up. Then we're going to come down into our child's pose. So you might bring the hands underneath the head again, or you can bring the head down to the floor, find the heels with the hands. And we're going to compress the belly onto the thighs. So you really are pressing the belly in. There's a little bit of compression into those abdominal organs. Shouldn't feel uncomfortable though. So this is where sometimes we start to notice some of our bad habits and how yoga can start to inform better choices in the rest of our lives as well. You'll notice that if you've eaten something really heavy, something that's sitting like a rock in the body, it's not going to feel good when you practice this pose. And hopefully, if you're committed to your yoga practice and committed to improving your fertility, you're gonna pick some better choices, at least in the two hours before yoga anyway, because you're not gonna to wanna to feel this in your belly as you rest here in child's pose. So again, breathe into that belly and notice as it presses into the top of the legs. slowly coming up. I want you to bring the feet wide so that you can sit between the feet. If your hips don't like this, you can put a cushion or some books underneath the hips. And I just want you to sit tall, so feel like you're spreading through the chest, drawing the shoulder blades together behind you. You can either stay here or bring the hands behind you, fingertips pointing towards the toes. Lift the hips up, open the heart further, maybe even let the head and neck fall behind you. As you exhale, slowly come back down. Roll onto this right leg, draw the left leg in so that we're sitting up onto the right foot. You're gonna hug the left leg into the belly so that you're getting this compression on the side of the belly. The left hand comes behind you and just look over that left shoulder. Slowly releasing, coming to the opposite side. So rock onto the left leg, bend the left knee, press the foot into the floor, hug it in, right fingertips, lengthen the spine as you inhale. And as you exhale, draw that leg in. And 
gently release back to the front. Bring both legs out in front of you now. I'm gonna come into the middle of my mat. Draw the legs right in. We make a cosmic egg. So basically you're making yourself as small as you possibly can. And then gently release, bring the feet to the mat. Hands come behind you. So again, you can either stay here just pressing and lifting or you could lift the hips up as well, really bringing some heat to the back side of the body, some energy to helping to get blood flowing, which is great for fertility. Opening up through the front of the body as well. Maybe the head and neck feels good to look behind you. And then slowly bring the hips back down. Left leg stretches out in front. Right comes up and over the knee. So keep that foot flexed. It will protect this knee. Just gently inhale, lift and open the heart. Exhale, lean forward. So it's really subtle in the body, not too much of a fold. We don't want you to think about getting down here. We want to keep space in the spine, space in the chest, space in the belly. And then release opposite side, left foot comes over. So it's not resting on my knee, it's kind of up on my thigh a little bit. Keep the foot flexed. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale and gently fold. So you might need to keep reminding yourself to lengthen. As you start to soften and relax, that spine gets a little bit lazy. So keep reminding yourself to lengthen. Lift the heart and fold from the hips. Return that leg, draw both legs back in, make yourself as small as you possibly can. And then release the feet down. So bring the feet together, let the knees fall out. We take a little butterfly with the legs, just gently bouncing them up and down, releasing any tension that you might be holding into inner thigh here encouraging blood flow and all those good things. Lift and lengthen through the heart. We're gonna take a little twist here. So just bring that left hand around like you did before. Find the outside of that right knee and look over that left shoulder. Gently release, coming to the opposite side. Leave this left leg where it is. We're gonna bring the right leg around the opposite way. So it's like the left foot is standing on the top of the right thigh. The left hand comes around. Inhale as you press into the leg, lift the hips up. And exhale as you come back down. So we're working with the breath here. Inhale as you lift. Exhale as you lower. One more time, inhale as you lift. And exhale as you lower. Swap those legs over, so bring the right leg in and the left leg out. Right hand comes down, inhale as you lift, exhale as you lower. Inhale as you lift, exhale as you lower. One more time, inhale. And exhale. All right, bring those legs in. We're gonna lay all the way down onto the back. So slowly let yourself roll down or you can use the hands to support. Get yourself into Shavasana, get yourself as comfortable as you can and ready for our short meditation to finish our practice today. So just a little note before we get comfortable in Shavasana, if you have a weight of some sort, like a bolster or like a weighted bean bag sort of thing, like those heat packs, or even just a few cushions, I want you to bring them onto your belly because that's gonna help you keep focus and bringing the breath to the belly, but also the act of the weight pressing down helps to bring our nervous system down, so it helps to bring our stress levels down. I feel really nurturing and comforting to the body. So wherever you are ready for Shavasana, just close down the eyes. Allow the breath to find a steady rhythm. 
Let there be some ease in the breath. So not forcing it, but being aware of the breath. Notice where it enters and exits through the nose. Notice how good it feels to just allow yourself this space and this ease. There's no striving in this space. You can't do yourself into a good Shavasana. You can't do it well. It just is. You just have to be. You just have to breathe. And so we practice this here on the mat. We practice breathing with ease, with just allowing ourselves to be in hope that when we step off the mat today, we can take that energy, that intention with us. So where in your life can you find more ease? Is it in your approach to eating? Instead of feeling like healthy eating is a struggle, what if you just decided, I'm gonna approach it with ease. I'm gonna forgive myself if I make mistakes. I'm going to Make the very best decision I can make at any moment and accept that as what it is. Maybe it's ease in your relationship. Why can you drop the fight, drop the struggle, drop the striving, come back to ease? Maybe it's in your work, in your job, in your career, in your business, drop the hustle. Drop the forcing, trying to make things happen. Come back to the breath. Show up, do your best and let everything else go. Trust that what will be, will be. And then maybe you can apply that same ease to your process of making a baby. I know it's the hardest one. It's the one that hits us right in the heart, right in the belly. But can you breathe, trust, let go, find ease, know that it is going to happen for you and no amount of doing, no amount of searching the internet for answers, no amount of quizzing your friends, no perfect amount of sex or perfect number of multivitamins or specialists. None of that is going to make your baby if you don't find this space in your life for ease, to allow life to flow. Fertility flows, it doesn't strive and struggle and hustle. It's our natural state of being. You are a creative being, creative energy personified. What if instead of Seeking outside of yourself, you came back to yourself and embodied it. Find ease. Come back within yourself. Because that is where all the answers that you need are. That's where they exist. You already have it all within you. Take 10 more deep breaths, meditating on these ideas, letting these thoughts wash over you, within you, and settle.
to start to bring your awareness back. Place a hand on the heart, a hand on the belly. Just take a moment of gratitude for your own body, for giving yourself this time today, for giving yourself this space, this practice, maybe just setting the intention for ease. Maybe you're not convinced yet, but you've got to start somewhere. Taking any movement, stretching out however you need right now, I'm opening the eyes when you're ready, slowly returning. As always, it is such an honor to share this practice with you. I feel so grateful that I'm able to share it with you from my home. I love receiving emails from you, letting me know that you're in Jerusalem, in Poland, in India, in the UK, in the US, in Canada, from around the world joining in this practice of coming home to themselves. It's so profound and I really feel grateful that I live in a time where this is possible, where I can connect with you from here in a way that wasn't possible even just 10 years ago. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for clicking on that little button to practice with me today. Please know that whilst there are screens and possibly thousands of kilometers of distance between us, that we are so similar. I know that I often get told that I'm so calm and I've come to this place. I know that you're looking to me for answers. And while yes, maybe I'm a little bit further along this journey than you, I've been where you are and I know what it feels like. And while you will get hints along the way from outside of yourself, the real answers do lie within. You've just got to find a way to be quiet enough to come home to yourself and to find them. So if you would like to do more fertility yoga, I have a free guide. I'll link it above and below so you can download it. You can also check out my online yoga circle or that four part series I mentioned earlier. Start practicing regularly. It is a beautiful practice. It's one that has helped me so much throughout my journey and I really hope that it helps you as well. I hope to practice with you again soon and namaste. Mm -hmm.